As far as uh, tension and intent, first thing you want to do, find your marks, get your pull pad on it. And then you want to bring this tent up, or this pull up vertical in both directions so that it's standing up like this. Always pull the slack out of your ratchet before you start using the handle. If I just start doing this right here from this point, I'm going to run out of reel on here before I get it tight. So I want to pull this up by hand, pull that up straight, pull this up by hand until they're vertical in both directions. Once I get the first one set, as I'm walking to the next corner, don't just put your blinders on and walk. I generally will take a walk out and around that way so that I can look at the tent as I go by. And what I'm looking for is I, I walk out to this point here. What I'm looking for is did I over pull it that way? Did I have a miss mark on the ground? And what I'm looking for is here's my stake, there's my center pull, and once this gets tightened this way, is that going to pull in line? Yes, it is. So it's going to be pretty close. Had I over pulled it, Instead of continuing on, I would have gone back, loosened that up a little bit. So from here, I'm just going to take a trip out here. I'm going to stop here, take a look. Okay, it's all good. I'm going to come here. <coughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten this one up. And I'm going to tighten this one up until they come up into the, the vertical. Okay? When I am to here, after I've set that first corner, which one of these should I be working on first? Okay. Is there a reason that I want to be on this one first? Perfect answer. Their answer is because I already have the tension there. You always want to pull against the side that you first set. Whatever's already tensioned, you want to pull against it. So I will always want to set this one next, and then I want to set this one. All right? So. Once I pull all the slack out that I can by hand, then I'm going to go ahead and introduce some tension into it. I'm keeping an eye on the eave here till the eave goes nice and tight. I'm watching this pull till that pull goes up straight and down. And I'm going to set this one until that goes straight up and down. And then again, as I walk to that corner, don't put the blinders on. You want to walk around on the outside. You want to take a quick stop here. Am I lined up? Yes, I'm looking pretty good. Yes, I'm looking pretty good. Everything still is shifted this way, and it should be because I haven't tensioned here. So then I'm going to get down to this corner, and I'm going to tighten here, right? No, no, no. Right on. We're going to go here. I'm going to pull against the corner that's already been set. So again, I'm going to pull out as much as I can by hand. Ratchet up the rest of it. And then I'm going to pull up as much as I can by hand. And I'm going to ratchet that. Then I'm going to move to the next corner. All right, am I going here or am I going here? 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 Yep. Not here? Yep. Your question. Doesn't really matter, exactly. It's a trick question. But to keep in the uniform of what we've been doing, I'd probably go here, because then I am pulling against the one I had set last. Could I go here? Absolutely, because that one's already set. But I would go here. Again, we're going to pull out what we can. My hand. next step will vary. I'll be honest with you, I don't do this next step on a tent this small. I'm going to show it to you because you should be using this step on 30 foot and larger tents. What we're talking about is how do we tension the intermediate poles. 
<laughs> on these smaller tents, from an efficiency standpoint and a time standpoint, I don't think you need to do what I'm going to show you next. So please use your imagination. Pretend this is a 60 wide. Okay? You will be doing this on 40 wide on up, 30 wide on up. Basically what you need is a mason string. We've got all four corners set where they belong. We attach the string down at the first corner pull. And what we're doing is we're making a box bounded by the four corner pulls so that we know where these pulls have to go. And once he gets this string out and pulled tight and attached, all we need to do to do our tensioning and our side pole positions is to take this pole, touch it against that string, and tighten it up until that pole goes vertical. So, once I go vertical there, I'm going to touch that to the string, pull it up vertical there, same thing on the other side, same thing all the way around. Once that's done, I generally always go back and touch up my corners because I find that after I introduce the tension into these intermediate poles that some of these are going to loosen up and I will have to tighten them up and you can see this one's not truly vertical yet so we're going to tighten this one up. Now, what order do you do things? Where do you start? What do you do? How do you tension a tent? I can give you about 20 different methods I think what I do works very well, so this is what I'm going to teach you. We start all of our tents at the middle on the short side. We get that pull tension. If I'm working with a second team member, one of us does this. And let's say there's an intermediate pull here. Michael, where are you? Michael's going to tension this one. I'm going to tension this one. We're going to skip the corners because we've already set the corners. And we're going to work around so that I'm doing this one, he's doing that one. Then I'm going to do this lace line, he's going to do that lace line. And we're going to just keep on working all the way around the tent until we end up at the middle on that end. Do not get more than two poles ahead of your partner. If you do, you're going to start to pull the tent one way and he's going to play like heck trying to get his side stood up and you actually can create a curved tent you got to stay working together okay one guy does one side one guy does the other side in a wind if you have a side wind that's blowing on the tent the guy that's working on the wind side always without fail goes first he needs to get as much tension into the tent because he's fighting not only the tent and the fabric, he's fighting the pressure of the wind blowing down on the fabric. So the guy on the wind side, he goes first. Guy downwind goes second. And you just keep working your way right on down the tent. If you do that, you should end up with what you're standing on. A tent with no wrinkles in it, a tent that has you stand outside and look at these side poles. The side poles are perfectly in line. Everything is picture perfect. That's how every one of these tents was tempting you. Between either Michael and myself or Adam and Michael or whatever. We started dead center on the ends and we just worked our way around the tent. The very last thing we did on every tent after we tensioned things was to go back and touch up the corners. Now, the other theories that have been thrown out is to stand under the tent, look at the tent, and anything that is directly attached to the center pole gets tightened first. In other words, corner, lace line, and center on the end. And you skip everything else. So you go around the tent once and you do those. Then you go around the tent a second time and you do the intermediates. That's one thing that's been thrown up. We tried it for a while. The problem with that is 
Now I'm going around the tent twice, and honestly, we ended up going around the tent three times because what happened was when we did the lace lines and we came back and did the intermediates, that introduced slack in the lace lines, and I had to come back and do them again. So that became three trips around the tent. I like one trip around the tent. Okay? So that's what we have found works the best. Start here, and two guys work your way around. If for whatever reason you are a one-man army, do not just go in one circle around the tent. You go from here to here to there to there to there to there to there. You have to go back and forth. And if you're doing a 60 wide or an 80 wide, you best have on some good shoes because it's a lot of walking. Because you've got to go back and forth, back and forth. Otherwise, you will create that curved tent where you'll pull everything one way.